So far, we have been dealt, uh, dealing with functions with period of 2pi. Okay. So what about functions of periodic functions, but uh, with, with a period of not equal to 2pi? Can we still use something similar uh, to Fourier series? And the answer is yes. And it's actually pretty easy. So suppose uh, suppose f is a periodic function or the peri uh, periodic function with period of let's say two two l pi. where l is uh, any positive number. Okay. So it, it may be integer, it may not be integer, it doesn't matter. Then uh, we can show that uh, we can show that f of x e, uh, can be expressed as uh, uh, of course we assume uh, this is a smooth function continuous and differentiable. Then we have so instead of exponential of i k x we have i k x over L. And so this right hand side converges uniformly uh, to the function this one. And the Fourier coefficient is defined as instead of 1 over 2 pi we have 1 over 2 pi L. And the range of integration is uh, from negative L pi to positive L pi. And f of x and exponential of negative i k x over L. and k is an integer. So all of these hold because just by uh, transforming the variables from uh, x to uh, uh, lx, then all these uh, will be just an ordinary Fourier, uh, Fourier series of a periodic function with period of 2 pi. So they are all the same. And all the results we have obtained so far are also applicable to these functions of uh, period, func periodic function with period of 2L pi. Now, let us assume that the function is of class C1. And with bounded support. Uh, by the way, support means support of F means uh, the set of uh, values of its variable at which the function is non zero. Okay? So bounded support means that this set is bounded. Okay, so they are not uh, well. There can be infinitely many uh, values of x such that f of x is not non-zero, but uh, this set is bounded. So uh, there's a limit on, on upper side and lower uh, lower bound and upper bound of this x. Okay, uh, then. Let's say uh, the support is included in the interval from negative L pi to positive L pi. Okay. If L is large enough, then we can assume this. Then the Fourier coefficient of uh, this function f is given by ck 1 over 2 pi L and 
negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, uh, so this interval includes the support. So beyond this interval, everything, uh, the functional value is zero. So we can just extend the range of integration to negative infinity to positive infinity. So we have this and negative i k x over l dx. Okay, so the difference between this and the previous one is uh, this part. Okay. Now let's define f hat of xi by one over square root of two pi and integral and f of x and exponential of negative i xi x dx xi is a real number real variable then so if we substitute this you uh, uh, use this expression uh, this Fourier coefficient ck can be expressed as uh, this to pi and f hat of k over l so k uh, k over l it is replacing this psi here and times 1 over L. So 1 over L, this L comes from here. This L. Now, let's put this uh, Fourier coefficient into uh, this expression. Then we have f of x is equal to uh, this and summation from negative infinity to positive infinity f hat kl one of l and x is less than or equal to uh, l pi so this is the uh, range of uh, support then fix x so this x and let uh, l go to infinity we can write so this is like uh, Riemann sum Right, so k over l is the value of x. Uh, probably we should write xi here, and this is like uh, uh, delta xi. So this becomes integral. Oh, wait a minute, this should be divided by L. Xi x and D Xi. So what this means is that the function f can be expressed as a linear combination of uncountably many uh, exponential functions or trigonometric signs and cosines so this is a general uh, generalization of Fourier series now we don't have to assume that f of x is a periodic function anymore it it, it can be non-periodic function it doesn't matter as long as its support is uh, bounded and we call uh, this f hat this one, uh, the Fourier transform, transform of 
f of x. And this formula is called the inversion formula. Because we can uh, invert the Fourier transform of f to obtain the original f. So it's kind of inverting the Fourier transformation, Fourier transform. But uh, we end here. Uh, we are not going to uh, deal with Fourier transform in detail. Uh, this is beyond the scope of this lecture. So that's all for this module. And thank you so much. And see you sometime.